Hey guys, Whew, I'm even sweating right now because what I just went through is not something I wish on anyone. Nah, this world, <laughs> don't trust anyone, guys. Don't trust anyone. So, what happened was like one guy just almost finessed me, almost sent me to jail. Like, seriously, this is like, nah, this world, don't trust anyone at all. You let me go home and then I'll tell you, I'll tell you the full story. Hey guys, it's me Paul Mensa again and I know you guys want to know what happened, what went down and everything but before that, please make sure you like this video, subscribe and then also when you're done, share with your friends. So what happened was that I went to drop my sister off at the SAT center ICS in Komasti because she's actually right in the SAT and as I was there, waiting for them to, I mean the examiners to call the students in, I was confronted with this gentle looking guy and he came around saying oh he asked if i'm a fellow and the fellow is given to those who actually in katanga hall they actually stay there and everything so yeah i said i'm a fellow and he was like oh he knows me from there i was like oh, okay that's good that's good and then i proceeded to ask him how is everything how is, how is everything how is studies and everything i prepared and i was like oh yeah and he said he came to write a subject test I think it's a chemistry and math. Yes, math. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But he said he was on wait list. And basically with the wait list, it's like you registered late. They will tell you that there's no space available, but you can come on the test date. Maybe someone may not appear or maybe will not be available on that day. So you can actually sit in and then write your paper. So he said, oh yeah, he came, to, he came around to check and he even has a program at church, 10 year anniversary program. And he's even the one who play, who's going to play the keyboard for them, so he'll be going to for that after. So I was like, oh, okay, that's good, that's good. And so they called the students in, they called them. So I went to my sister to at least give her advice, the, oh, pay attention, make sure you highlight the keywords, I mean, all those small, small, small things that help. And then I came back after they left, she's left to go and write a paper. And then he was not there, so I was thinking, okay, maybe he's going to check if the space available so i was like waiting for him to see if maybe there was space he came he came around i think in two like two minutes later he came and he was like oh he couldn't find space but then i was like because i actually passed the classes when i was looking for the class my sister was actually being writing and i came, i passed the subject test guys and there were only like three people writing according to the list that was based on the law so i was like uh, why won't you get space because it's just three people and then he was like oh he doesn't know i was like oh go and pressure the examiners i mean this is not anything you can like you will not get that this chance to write i mean it's not every day you write the subject test i was like okay so he said oh and I, after pressuring him I was like oh he, he said he has no paid so i was like okay but he said oh there's nothing you'll go for the church program because he even has something important to do there so I was like, mm, okay, sure. I'm even heading home because earlier my mom called me that oh she needs the car, so I should not delay. I should hurry up and come. So I was like, okay, sure, sure, sure. Why not? I mean, you can come with me. I'll drop you off somewhere, and then you can continue to church. So what happened was that he actually had, sorry about that. He actually had a Pentecost shirt under underneath his actual shirt. And I was like, oh, she did remove it. And I was like, oh, don't worry about that. When we get to the car, it's not important. You can just remove your shirt and then. Yes, change in the car. So we're uh, heading towards the car and the car was parked outside. So I mean we had to pass the gates. We as we are approaching the gates, we met these three sec the security men who were there. And they asked us to open our bag. I mean I didn't have a bag but then he had a bag. So he opened a bag, he had a laptop inside, some books and some other things I didn't actually see. So they actually picked his the laptop out of his bag and they told him to type the password in. And one of the security guys behind him saw like, you see when you actually open your laptop, you see maybe if you save your name or something and then password. So the name there was Emmanuel something. So he asked, um, are you Emmanuel or whatever, 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 whatever. And he was like, oh yeah. So as he was, he held it. I even held his back as he was typing the password. He was typing the password and then 
out of nowhere he was like why are you people suspecting me and i'm like what is all this mentally in my head i was like what is all this just type the thing hurry up and let's go because my mom is even calling me out to hurry up and and so it was it was weird to me that you actually say that and then this is what happened let me even demonstrate yeah so he was actually with the laptop right typing the password and then out of nowhere he tossed the laptop in the direction of the security man and quickly ran <coughs> Again. The whole time I was actually shocked. Like I couldn't comprehend what was transpiring just before my eyes. Like I just couldn't understand. This was literally my face. It is what it is. It is what it is. Oh yes, he was caught and he was sent away by one security <coughs> man. So the other two were there questioning me. I mean, if you are seen with a thief, you can be held responsible because you can be, I mean, you are seen as an accomplice. You're actually helping the person get away with the crime. So yeah, they were questioning me and saying how disappointed they were in me. And they even got to a point where like, they are even going to call the police. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Like from a normal day of helping someone and then out of nowhere, it's turning into a nightmare, like involving jail time because of someone's actions. So, it was really, really tense, like I can tell you. But then, luckily, the security guy that took him came and then he was like, Oh, he knows my brother. And he was referring to one guy named Felix, who actually finished, completed ICE at the same time I completed high school. And he kind of looks like me because of like skin color and everything. So, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Felix, thanks for the save. <laughs> Anyways, back to the story. That was not the worst part. The worst and surprising part was that the guy, I mean, the security man who sent the boy out, we came and he said, this is the guy's second time. Hey! <laughs> the whole time I was just there, like, confused, totally. Like, and then the security man who had sent the boy, said oh the boy had stolen the teacher's laptop he had stolen a phone yes, which I got to like, later i got to know was my friend it was a close friend of mine who was writing his phone he had stolen charger he had stolen headphones but then yeah i was advised by the security men to leave before any police or anything and I'll be put into a serious situation and stuff. So yeah, I left and the whole time I was in the car, I was like, thinking about how this guy has finessed me, eh? It's okay, it's okay. You know, I really, really thank God because, I mean, he could have, I mean, while I was on the way, he could have taken my phone with me being oblivious to what's going on and then by the time I realized he has my phone, he drops off somewhere and then he goes and I have no way of getting it back. So yeah, I mean, it's really, really, I really, really thank God. And then, but think about it. Like now, I really, really pity those, I mean, who found themselves in a similar situation as mine, but then they were, they actually exacerbated and became worse. And he found himself actually in jail, being innocent and everything. So it's a really, really serious thing now that I've gone through it and I've experienced it. I mean, looks, looks, looks can be deceiving because if you see this guy looking so timid, gentle looking and everything, you will never suspect anything. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know why it's going on. <laughs> so yeah, I shared my experience, not just for sharing sake, but then to actually let you know of my experience so that you can learn from it just in case you are put in a similar situation so that you know how to go about it. I actually got a picture of the guy but I'm not going to share it because I'm not into counseling or condemning anyone. I mean, I believe that people change. But then, I mean, I also believe that lessons can be learned from every experience you have and clearly this, the lesson I learned was just to be cautious of the people around you, especially those you don't know those you want to help even the bible says in micah 7 5 that do not trust a neighbor and have no confidence in a friend 
and this is clearly something we should take to heart. Just be cautious up above, I mean, with the people around you, especially those you don't know. And I think with everything will be fine. And that's all for now. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button. And then also subscribe. Make sure you turn on post notifications so at least you'll be alerted each time. I mean, the next time, especially when I post the next video. And feel free to comment down below. I'll definitely be checking it out. And so until next time.